Good morning, uh, speaking from InfoLive TV in Jerusalem. And today's debate will be uh, concerning Israel's policy on the release of Palestinian security prisoners, whether it be to uh, secure the freedom of our three soldiers, uh, Gilad Shalit in Gaza, and of course Ehud Goldwasser and Eldad Regev that have been held captive by the Hezbollah. If we should also consider it for uh, boosting uh, Abu Mazen's uh, new emergency government. With me today I have former Knesset member Naomi Khazan, uh, also a professor of political science and a human rights advocate. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning. And uh, we have on this side uh, Frumit Roth, uh, whose daughter Malki was murdered in the uh, suicide bomb attack in Zbaro in Jerusalem in August 2001. Uh, thank you both for joining us here today. And uh, I would like to start with what, uh, Naomi, what do you think Israel's policy should be? Uh, my position on this is a position I've held for quite some time, and, and that is that uh, any soldier that is sent uh, to the army and is sent to defend Israel, uh, the state has an obligation, I would say a supreme obligation, to assure his return. And therefore, I have advocated from the word go, a prisoner exchange, even a massive prisoner exchange, uh, for the return of Gilad Shalit. I must admit that today I'm very upset uh, that this wasn't affected earlier, because I, I, I think this is a, a real bottom line, uh, that, uh, that the state has a a really an amazing obligation to secure a release, even if it involves a, a massive prisoner exchange. I emphasize a massive prisoner exchange. The opportunity was there a few months ago. I, I, I'm very concerned that it's going to be more difficult now. And do you think the criteria should be changed because Israel's criteria has been up until now more or less not to release uh, prisoners with blood on their hands who have been in directly involved in terror attacks? I think sometimes this calculus is something that, that, that impedes rather than, than promotes uh, the objective. Uh, oftentimes, uh, right after Shalit's uh, kidnap, there was a roundup of, uh, of uh, uh, Palestinian, mostly Hamas uh, uh, politicians and elected officials basically is a bargaining chip. Uh, but the actual arrest probably created uh, more violence mm -hmm. than anything. So how, how do you calculate this? It, it's something that nobody has been able to answer. And I sometimes worry that the fear of a future attack is impeding what has to be done. And that is, it's one year since Gilad Shalit was kidnapped. And the state has not retrieved him, and I think that's unacceptable. And what are your views from it? Well, um, first of all, the supreme obligation of, a, of any government is to protect its citizens, to keep them alive. And uh, releasing murderers right back into the hands of the organizations they worked with before and murdered under, um, is obviously endangering everybody. Uh, but I would focus more on the release of the, uh, not the security prisoners, but the, uh, the prisoners with blood on their hands, as you mentioned. And in particular, one name that has been uh, cropping up often on this list that is being dictated to our government is the name of uh, someone who uh, protected, gave refuge to uh, the murderers of my daughter and uh, that is Marwan Barghouti and Abdullah Barghouti who constructed the very bomb that uh, took my daughter's life. And these are murderers and I can't see any justification to release murderers. What will happen to a society in which everyone knows that you can murder and mass murder, you can massacre actually, 15 people were murdered. Um, on that day when my daughter was, um, daughter's life was taken. If everyone walks around knowing you can do that and then get released, which is something that most uh, Palestinian prisoners here in Israel say openly, we know we will be freed. 
they're uh, w working on uh, past experience. They see that's what's happened so many times over and over again. We've got to prove that that, can't, that doesn't happen anymore. If you murder, you are imprisoned for life. We don't murder, we don't execute the, the murderers. We imprison them for life, which is quite compassionate, if you ask me. And do you think, even though that it may help a prisoner release, may help in securing the release of the three soldiers, um, perhaps we should recall also that in the past when Israel has uh, released security prisoners, a number have returned to perpetrating terror attacks. Um, on the other hand, in the past also, Israel's willingness to uh, release prisoners didn't uh, help in receiving any information about uh, Air Force Navigator Ron Arad or the three soldiers that are still missing uh, from the uh, battle in Sultan Yaakov? Well, there are many other ways. Uh, what we've seen is simply reactions on the part of our government to um, proposed uh, prisoner lists. They're handed over, our government reacts. Um, there may be efforts going on behind the scenes to uh, gain their release, and I would hope that they will eventually succeed. Again, I, I want, I'm not going to comment as firmly on a prisoner release in order to uh, retrieve our, um, our soldiers, but releasing murderers has got to be um, absolutely unacceptable, not even considered. Uh, I, I understand the sentiment, and I don't think there are any words that that, that can convey what I what I, every I think uh, human being has to feel, mm -hmm. and that is terrorism is a is an obscenity. What we're talking about, though, is I, I think more serious than that, and I want to raise uh, several questions. The first question is. What is the price of the non-release? What is the human price of the non-release of certain people? Mm -hmm. Okay? Is not releasing uh, prisoners more costly in terms of human life? And I think there's a very grave danger that there is. That, that is precisely going to be the outcome. Uh, I, I want to relate directly to Mawan Barakut, who, by the way, was not convicted of personally being involved, being behind. He was the leader, okay? But he was not personally uh, uh, involved in, in, in terrorist activity. In many respects, his arrest was a political uh, arrest. And, 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 and from that point of view, probably also a strategic error, okay? Situation now. It is totally chaotic in Gaza, and there's a threat that it, be, that it will become anarchic in, in the West Bank as well. Marwan Barghouti is a very critical period, a person for the stabilization of the situation in the West Bank, which can save many lives. And therefore I would argue very strongly that there are compelling reasons to release him, there have been in the past, but I think now even more so. Nelson Mandela was incarcerated in Robben Island from 64 to 1991, um, and he was convicted as a terrorist. A terrorist. Again, he approved it, but he did not engage in it himself. Look, Mandela was absolutely critical to the most important democratic revolution, the second half of the 20th century. So I, I, I suggest seriously reconsidering the argument around Mar Marwan Barghouti. I think it's crucial for the security of Israelis. We, the most important uh, prisoner exchange in recent years was effected by, by Ariel Sharon as prime minister. Okay, it was a major exchange mm -hmm. for one civilian, Tannenbaum, and 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 the bodies of three Jesus. Israeli soldiers, whose families had the absolute right to to bring them to burial in Israel. If we refuse to release prisoners in exchange for our soldiers, 
we are transmitting to our soldiers a message that if you get caught, you're dead. Because the state's not going to do anything to retrieve you. Gilad Shalit is alive. And we should bring him back. Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, respond to the statement um, that if we do not release prisoners, then the message will be we're not doing, we don't do anything to retrieve our soldiers. There are many soldiers who would not want to see murderers released in order to release them, many of them. Uh, secondly, to compare, as is very convenient and attractive uh, to, comp- to, uh, to Israel, Israel's enemies, to compare us to South Africa on whatever uh, grounds is unfair. So I think that to uh, introduce Nelson Mandel to the discussion is simply uh, is not, uh, is not acceptable. Marwan Barghouti was convicted of murder. He is serving several life sentences. Everyone knows that an enabler of a murderer is a murderer. Somebody who uh, hands funds over to murderers is a murderer. He is a murderer. He was convicted in our courts. He got a fair trial. We are a democracy. And we have a fair justice system. So that can't be argued with. He has got to sit in jail till the end of his days, as do all other murderers. Parents of murdered children are not expected to sit down and allow the murderers of their children to walk free. This, only in Israel are we expected to show compassion, supposedly, by allowing something like that to happen. That, I, I, I want to comment also on the uh, mass prisoner release that Sharon uh, engineered in order to retrieve Tannenbaum. It incensed many Israelis to use that as a precedent to show that it can be done and it should be done. First of all, as I said, many Israeli uh, citizens were angered by it, and many of those released prisoners returned to terrorism and murdered Israelis. What will your response be if the government indeed decides to free him in order to bolster Abu Mazen's uh, new emergency government? I mean, how will it make you feel? Well, I will be furious, and I will try to fight it before it happens. Bolstering Abbas's government has become a joke. We have done so much to bolster it, and we've gotten nowhere. We've handed him money and arms that have now ended up in the hands of Hamas. This line bolstering Abbas's government is a farce. He has no power, and it's not our job to try and empower him. I think this discussion is really a very good reflection of the debate in Israeli society. And, and, and therefore, it's very good uh, that, that it's being aired, because it's precisely the discussion that existed in the past, and it's not an easy one. It's an it's no. extraordinarily difficult one in some cases, even a very painful Kronia trial. Uh, of Nelson Mandela in his subsequent release. Uh, and I would like to put it to you that we have to at least consider these comparative lessons very, very seriously. In the case of Mar- Marwan Barghouti, and this is a critical point, we, the imp- potent- possible release of Marwan Barghouti is being done for Israel and Israel's security. It is not to bolster Abbas. It is to stabilize the situation in the West Bank. I think think at the moment he is critical to the political stabilization in, in the West Bank and a key preventive to the... uh, uh, radiation of what happened in Gaza across to the West Bank. And if one doesn't understand that, then in two years' time, unfortunately, we will be moaning the fact that we didn't seize the opportunity now to stabilize the situation. It is our security as well. We have nothing to gain from the total destabilization of the Palestinian Authority. Nothing. It will, it will immediately reverberate on Israel and the security of Israeli citizens. And I think now is the time to use reason. That's point number one. Okay? And point number two, uh, 
on the personal level, I keep going back to it. If we attach certain conditions, we are undermining the most motivation and the willingness of our soldiers to wholeheartedly defend the country. And therefore, the obligation of the state here is absolutely categoric, and that is to do everything possible to retreat. I don't think that such a, mo a move uh, by the government will bring or transmit a different the message to our soldiers, that any terrorists that murder Israelis will uh, be set free. They're not paying the price, but Israelis' uh, homes will continue to pay that price Marco, and lose their loved Marco, ones. Look, look, I don't have to tell you. I, I think the evidence speaks for, it, mm. for itself right now. Gil Atchalik has not been exchanged. And uh, have uh, two soldiers uh, in his uh, and uh, have no information uh, on uh, around that, the three that, from that, That's Yacob. right. I, I, although I think uh, Sultan Yaqub and Onar are a little different because they're probably not in the hands of very, any known organization, which makes it much more difficult. The point I wanted to make, and it's a very important one, can you say without any doubt that the non-release of Gilad Chalit and the non-exchange of prisoners has improved Israel's security or has it made it worse? Because that is the question. Anything you'd like to yes. add? Because I can see you yes, almost uh, closing it's the very, yeah, it, It's very easy to conjecture that this will improve the situation, releasing um, a mass release of prisoners, including murderers. It's very simple, but why don't we look at recent history? We've made many concessions in recent history in the past few years. They've gotten us nowhere. The situation has become worse. Let's look at history and let's learn from it. And let's stop making concessions that simply embolden our enemies because that will be the result. Look, I'm sorry that we're going to cut it right now, but thank you very both of you very much for joining us here on Info Live. And obviously, it's a subject that is going to cause a lot of controversy and raise a lot of pain in the future, unfortunately, in Israel's reality. Thank you very much.